All right, so now you guys have your, your first part of your polls, and the rest will be entered tonight, and I'll be getting those, and we'll have those together. Um, I will have those merged into one document, but um, for purposes of, for example, looking at the Refugio stuff, it might be, you might want to have this separate file so the, the data will be, so the order of the questions will be different in the full file, right? Because it's going to be lined up slightly differently to our master thing. But so, so th this is laid out just in the order that you guys ask the questions. So this one might be more useful if, you, if you're just curious about people on the beach, for example, and their responses. And as you know, not every single question was asked in both surveys. Uh, there was some overlap, but, but not every single one. So let's have a quick uh, running through our uh, data here. And I'd like to hear any impressions you guys have of, of our initial results. So the first thing is climate change a problem. The vast majority of folks say that climate change is a problem, 85% overall, not a, not a you know, massively stark difference between the June and September. When we ask people, are we doing a good job of managing our coast? Uh, a, a fraction of the public says that we are. Right. This one uh, very likely is significantly different. Right. So here we say 24% uh, overall. But if we break that down into during in the midst of the oil spill, we're getting less than one in five people responded that it was a uh, you know we're doing a good job managing our coast. Whereas a few months later, when that that clear assault to our beaches w was sort of out of the public's eye, basically, we're back up, we're closer to maybe almost a third of the people say that it's, uh, you know, more or less okay. So almost a doubling of the people that said we're doing an okay job. It's up to you guys how you'd like to display that. Clearly, uh, it's probably most appropriate to have all, so if we're answering this, having the yes and the no and the unsures uh, reported, but maybe you'd like to do statistics, say, on just the number of people that said yes, for example. Any thoughts about that? Any thoughts about uh, the climate change or the good management of the coast so far? No, everybody's in stunned silence. Excellent. Okay. Is the, is the health of California's ocean better now than 60 years ago? Uh, Again, a similar pattern. About about a, a fifth of the people said uh, that it only only about a fifth of the people said that yes, it's better than it was. And again, in the midst of the oil spill, that number it was about half of what it is now. When we don't have that that media that 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 direct observation, perhaps of visitors to the beach seeing oil on the beach. Uh, so so there we go. Any thoughts about that? No? Everybody's still asleep? Okay, great. How much seafood have you guys eaten? This is an incredibly stable number we found over the years. So, um, I mean, it might go up a, a half, a little few tenths of an ounce, uh, ounce here or there, but, but generally it's pretty, uh, uh, you know, in and out this year, that year. It's pretty stable. So, okay. Then we have our whole series of questions where we ask, do you, is it uh, safe to eat food from these various areas? So some of these areas, some of these places we've been uh, asking for uh, several years now. And so we have uh, some track record. Unfortunately, we, we mostly start asking these questions after there's a problem, right? So we weren't asking if people thought the Gulf of Mexico seafood was safe or not before the Deepwater Horizon. Uh, similarly, we were not asking about the Japanese, about Japanese seafood before Fukushima. So that's a problem with our study design that we don't have a baseline assessment uh, for those particular areas. But what we can do is we can look over time and how that number has changed over time. So it, it, was, it was level X. Has that level been changing since that, that first year of asking the question? Similarly, we've, we've asked uh, about Californian seafood. But 
we really don't break it into individual counties. We did for the first time this year. So uh, essentially, I think it's with some with some caveats. I think you can go ahead and consider the non Santa Barbara, California seafood view uh, as to be fairly similar to our California seafood view longitudinally over time. Um, so here we go. So we have Gulf of Mexico safe. About uh, a third of people think the Gulf uh, seafood from the Gulf of Mexico is safe to eat. About f overall, about 40% of people think the Santa Barbara stuff is. Um, um, uh, non California, non Santa Barbara, California, higher than our Santa Barbara samples, right? So people think that there is um, uh, something that's safer from being a little bit elsewhere, which is unusual. Normally, people think the the stuff close by you is safer because they they have more confidence and they think they know the rules and regulations. Alaskan seafood is one of the hallmarks of what people think of as being quote unquote clean usually because they think it's far away. They, all, all this Alaskan seafood marketing board, which we'll talk about, has worked very hard to try to get you to think that, they're, that they have well-managed fisheries. They work very hard to get you to think that it's some pristine place that humans don't have any impact upon, etc. And so, uh, yeah, so that, that's overall about two thirds of people think uh, Alaskan seafood is safe. Japan. Uh, closer to uh, our impacted areas, only about a fifth of the people think that Japanese seafood is safe to eat. Uh, Chinese seafood, uh, nobody likes Chinese seafood, right? It's, it's, uh, there's the whole anti-Chinese bias running through our society these days, but separate from that, there's a lot of um, concrete evidence that maybe health and environmental standards aren't perhaps what they could be in China. And all the formaldehyde and toothpaste and all that, all those stories have a significant uh, impact. And, and it appears to be much more so than even something like the Deepwater Horizon or Fukushima. Um, you have to decide why. But one, I think one common thought is that um, you know, yes, maybe the Gulf of Mexico happened, but there's some people at least looking at what's going on. I think there's a sense in China that it's hard to believe whatever information is coming out of there, right? So there's, there's, there's a different level there. It's not just environmental sustainability or, or condition of the items that we're talking about, but it's also can you even trust the source of the information? If people say it's safe, can you really believe them? So I think that, that, that clearly is what at least partially explains why this incredibly low confidence that, that seafood from China would be safe. Uh, Norway, uh, much higher. Thailand, similar to China, not as bad as China, but similar to China. Okay, then we get to how often do people go to California uh, uh, beaches. So here, uh, daily, about 10% of our beachgoers are reporting they're at the beach daily. 30% uh, are reporting they're... Now, okay, the, recall th these numbers here, these need to sum up to 100%. But you, you, so you may choose to report these data this way, which is totally legit, or you might choose to combine the data. So maybe you could say, do how many people visit the beach at least weekly? In which case we would add the weekly and the daily folks together. And so that would tell us that 43% of our, of our, of our, the people you guys encountered on the beach are, are there at least weekly. If we added the monthly on, right, that knocks us way, that takes us up to what? That would be 54, uh, 64, 67, that would be two thirds of the people that you guys are encountering are going to the beach at least monthly. So again, highlighting how important this part of our Santa Barbara land or Southern California landscape, excuse me, is to, to our cultural identity and health and all that stuff. Okay. <clears throat> we asked how often do people visit this beach? which uh, is possibly, you know, so you guys can interpret as to whether is how similar that is or not. 
but a lot of people seem to go to the same beaches or the same set of beaches over and over again. This question was asked with the thought of perhaps when we encounter people on the beach, maybe if a beach had been oiled or closed because of, uh, of the oiling and the tarring, they would have gone to an alternative beach. We didn't really see that that much. We didn't see that that much. So we see it's, it's hovering right around 10% of people wanted to go somewhere else. And, and we, didn't, we didn't specifically say was this because of the oil spill, but uh, it, at least that provides sort of a ground floor level. So in other words, what this is saying is probably if people, if there was a strong impact of the oil spill, people were probably um, going somewhere other than the beach. Yes. They do. Yes, they do. So I was wondering, maybe because everyone's kind of used to the natural seepage, it doesn't really affect them if there's a little bit more. Sure. Well, that's a, that's definitely the case for us too, right? Because because yeah. um, we haven't specifically talked about the refugio spill yet in terms of what we found so far, but um, the short version is it was a very patchy uh, event. Mm -hmm. And so some people just said, this is all baloney. This is, I see this amount of tar on the beach all the time. Yeah. Uh, now, if we'd been in, let's say, Hawaii or something that didn't have natural seeps, yeah. that would maybe have a much stronger deterrence. Uh, or if the oiling had been dramatically more intense, that would maybe have had a more, of, more of an impact. But yeah, clearly... Clearly, some of the lack of worry was because there, there's some tolerance or some acceptance of the background level of, of oiling. Totally. Uh, okay, where were we? Um, how far people drove. Uh, how much money people spent at the beach. Um, uh, either over the past week or the, or the ensuing week they plan to spend. Uh, and, and this is one we definitely have to break down by, by area. There's a lot of variation within there. Uh, and then again, again, these guys will, the recreational activities, let's see, what's the most popular, rec what would you guys predict the most popular recreational activity would be? Sunbathing. Sunbathing. Where's sunbathing? Sunbathing. 17%. Wow. Eating and drinking is pretty popular too. Others were the, okay, so things that didn't fit neatly into one of our predefined categories, okay. Oh my God. Relaxing. Yeah, chilling. Relaxing. <laughs> Relaxing. All right. Um, all right, so should, Cal should we, what should we do with California offshore oil drilling? Should we expand it? Should we continue as current, which uh, we haven't talked about this yet, but the, the current, um, the current situation is a, a drilling moratorium, meaning that uh, you can't do, it can't give out, uh, the government can't give out any additional leases. However, some of those leases that have already been leased could possibly be drilled. Does that make sense? So moratorium on, on new leases, not necessarily new drilling. Uh, and so the most popular answer here was uh, we should reduce our amount of oil drilling, followed closely by we should eliminate our offshore oil drilling. So again, this would be one that maybe if we sum these, how many people thought we should either reduce or eliminate, right? That would take us up to 60%. Almost two-thirds of people think we should uh, do that. Um, and again, it'll be interesting for you guys to compare this data to the stuff you're get the stuff you're entering tonight, which is this is people that are at the beach. So this is um, while it's, it's general public, this is maybe not as well. This clearly is not as random a slice of the population as you're going to get from you guys going to all your other uh, you know post offices and that kind of stuff. So um, so you might think that people that are at the beach might be predisposed to maybe be a bit more anti oil drilling because they might be worried about their, their resources being damaged, perhaps. But okay. Uh, and then we asked people, what do you think about the joint response? Let's look at, bef uh, in the midst of it, 
only about 7% thought it was excellent. That's about doubled uh, in the ensuing, um, I misspelled excellent, but other than that, that's okay. Uh, the ensuing uh, uh, three months, um, about the same amount think it's think it was good. Um, about the same amount thought it was neutral. Uh, the amount of bad maybe went down, although probably not significantly so. Horrible stayed about the same, and the people that were unsure, that's what seemed to have dropped. So people have seem seem to have uh, more people seem to have gone into one or another camp. With most of those people that were unsure back in the day, I guess thinking that it was a, a really good job in terms of the response. Uh, and okay, here we go. Same thing for the um, uh, Deepwater Horizon. Um, attitudes after. So, did you become less supportive, no change, or more supportive, regardless of what your opinion was? So, this, this might be a great one for you guys to do your sorting on, right? Oops. Your sorting on, which is, so, the people that become less supportive, um, were, you know, were they, we should eliminate it, we should reduce it, we should stay as, stay as usual, right? Business as usual. So, that would be interesting, but it look, looks like about, about half people claim that they become less supportive, and about a third of the population says that uh, there was no real change, and those and those numbers are, are really not impacted at all by the before versus after, and I mean look how similar these numbers are. These these are basically identical: 49%, 48, 32, 32, 3, 5, 15, 15. Uh, attitudes towards offshore drilling after BP. Um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't really imagine these should change that much because, right, this is, this is both, both these are essentially five years after and we see that. So it, it is, does, it, it is pretty, it's pretty easy to understand why this maybe hasn't changed at all. Uh, this is a question, again, we've never asked before the build the keystone. It was suggested this summer because of pipelines playing a significant role in the refugio spill. And we see that um, it's about about a little bit less. Well, yeah. So, so we saw a, a a dip in the people that were anti the uh, Keystone. Or sorry, 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 sorry. We saw a dip in support for the Keystone pipeline over time, which is maybe not what I would have predicted. And uh, we saw the the people that were anti keystone appear to increase in in representation so i would not have predicted that um okay so so this is another case where you know it's hard this is a social science thing right this is this is a, our society right now we can't isolate these as we can with more traditional experiments that you and i are used to so so other things changed as well such as uh, presidential candidates coming out saying one thing or another about the Keystone Pipeline, and, and other and other things. So uh, so attributing this to to just what happened with the Refugio spill is is problematic um, in this particular case. Um, you guys definitely want to look through people's comments and see what people's general comments were. Were they generally positive? Were they generally I'm confused? Where they generally, it's no big deal, right? Um, there, there were too many for me to, to do that, at least um, with the limited amount of time we had, but that might be something you guys would like to do. Uh, again, another thing you might want to do is you might want to uh, order the zip codes and maybe say, hey, how do people in Westlake Village versus Oxnard versus the Mesa and Santa Barbara versus Goleta, you know, something like that? You could say, hey, is, uh, how, do, how do people, do people's opinion, uh, track with their their zip code, let's say. So that would be one that might be interesting to do. Uh, how old they are is another one that would be interesting to try. And uh, folks that maybe for perhaps speak, speak Spanish at home or another language might be another interesting one to, to look at. Okay? What are your guys' initial thoughts on this stuff? Or, or, or what's most of interest to you guys that you're interested in exploring more as we start to get in these data sets? Okay, so age, effective age. Let me write some of these down. Okay, good. So age. Okay. 
Okay. What else? Location. Uh, so location meaning so the beach we did the survey on, or? Uh, just like where, yeah, so like where they were, so like the beaches that they were on versus, you know, their view of, you know, the impact or whatever. Okay, I should also say, I didn't mention this, if we scroll farther to the right, I apologize, I should have done that. Let's go all the way over to the right. There's some additional stuff for you. Okay, so I've coded all the beaches you've done. Uh, so as part of our long-term um, uh, beach health assessment here in Southern California, we have done some synoptic surveys, meaning we've all, uh, we've, while well, we do this anytime we go to a beach, uh, these are ones that we've done um, at what we would consider to be a peak summertime visitation. So this was, I don't have the date off the top of my head, but this was an early summer, uh, summer holiday over on a Saturday. So we went to all these beaches, or just about all these beaches. There's one or two that we maybe didn't hit, but we went to ones right nearby, so we just used those, those numbers for those. But this is the, the number of people, the density of humans that we saw on the beach this summer between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. that day. So, so, so there's a little bit of variation. They're not all at the exact same time, but they're all at what we would consider peak, peak visitation times for uh, Southern California beach in the summertime. And so that's what these numbers are. So these are number of people per, per unit area, per square kilometer. And I've just gone and, you know, so you guys did this survey at Ormond. I've just, you know, essentially pasted the same data in here. That's what that number is. This number is the uh, okay then we've gone through and we've we've scored the beaches based on essentially the may slash june time that we visited all these the maximum tarring that we observed so that's a categorical variable it goes from zero meaning we observed no tar whatsoever to one meaning very 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 light tar to two which is light tar Four is the next number, and that's moderate amount of tarring. And then six is a heavy amount of tarring. Okay, so it's it's from zero to six. With the larger the number, the the more tar. And that's that's again from our observations going back and forth. So it doesn't mean that on the same day all these beaches had that amount of tar. It means over this range, what was the most that was dumped on this particular beach? That's what that is. And then. This column here is essentially that same data. It just says, was there anything other than zero in this column? So there's even a little bit of tar. We scored that as, um, as there was some tar present. These may or may not be helpful to you guys doing your analyses. Uh, I think certainly with regards to some of the refugio spill questions, like how much you spend on the beaches or... Or, or those kinds of things. I think that I think it might be, but you don't have to use this data if you don't want to. And then this is the name of the beach that we surveyed. Again, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, this is the same name as the beach you surveyed. But in one or two, you guys went to the next cove over or something. And so, uh, so this 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 cell here reports the uh, the beach that the data comes from. And then this is just some of our logistics stuff. This is our own beach numbering beach number the name that we call the beach, and then the latitude and longitude. If you guys were confused by that or you wanted to plot on a map or something of that nature. Okay, cool. And the numbering, just so you guys know, the numbering's, numbering goes from north to south. So our most, most northern beach is one. Our most southern beach is, I don't know, 56 or 60. I can't remember the number. Okay, so you're welcome to use that to sort data by as well. Um, okay, so we have we have age, we have location. You guys might be interested in what else?